fan of softball, then you are going to love the Fast Pitch TV show. We're bringing you more interviews, more videos, and more product reviews than anyone else on the planet. Sit back and get ready. Here's the Fast Pitch TV show. Hello and welcome to the Fast Pitch TV show. I'm your host, Gary Leland. Now, if you found our show on Facebook, your Apple TV, or another video sharing device, please check out my website at fastpitch.tv. It's the home of the Fast Pitch TV network and the place to find all my softball video channels and softball blogs. At this time, there are seven video channels and 11 blogs on the website. And all of these blogs and video channels are dedicated to one thing and only one thing, and that's Fast Pitch Softball. Now this week, I want to welcome a new partner to the Fast Pitch TV show. I want to welcome Worth Sports as a partner for the following next year. Now Worth's Fast Pitch gear is designed specifically for the female athlete and will help take your game to the next level with their patented 454 legit technology it extends the sweet spot two inches in both directions on the bat giving players the largest sweet spot in the industry and it's made in the usa please show them some love visit their website at www.tinyurl.com slash worth fptv now, early this year, I was at Softball Con. I'd been last year for 2011, but i got to tell you, it grew a whole bunch since then. It's a great convention. You really need to check out their website at softballcon.net. Now, while I was at Softball Con, I filmed my friend Bill Hillhouse as he gave a great clinic. Now, this week, I'm going to bring you part three. Now, if you've not seen part one and two of his clinic, I'd recommend you go back. Start with part one of his clinic, which is show 196. Now, I'll bring you part three of Bill's clinic, Right after this word from a sponsor. Do you need a softball bat? Do you want to save $30? Softballjunk.com is offering an additional $30 discount off the price of all non-sale softball bats on their website. That's right, $30. So the next time you buy a bat, go to softballjunk.com and enter the code FPTV30 during checkout. And wham! You just put a cool $30 in your pocket. The arm circle. You see Monica here? Two parts of the arm need to touch two parts of the body. Otherwise, we're not utilizing our body. I try to get them to make sure that their bicep touches their ear, forearm touches the belly. If those two parts of my arm touch those two parts of my body, I know my arm went in a straight circle. If I'm not touching my arm to my ear, then my, I have a gap between my arm and my ear. Pitchers who do this have an extraordinarily high rate of getting shoulder pain from the scapula up into the rotator cuff. Our arms are not made to work in oblong circles. Not for very long, they're not. I want them to try to make sure they come up as close to the ear as they can, and then down as close to the belly as they can. Out here means that they're not getting the full arm circle, and they're setting themselves up for some shoulder pain. So we want to really try to eliminate that as much as we can right from the start. So arm circle is important. We want to make sure, again, bicep to the ear, forearm to the belly. The feet. There is a ginormous difference between my footwork and Jenny Finch's footwork. In a perfect world, we want to drag our tiptoe. Leaping and crow hopping is illegal because it allows a pitcher to have absolutely no resistance on the ground and to get out further and release the ball from a much closer distance. What I want is to try to go right to that line without going over the line. And that means that I'm going to try to drag my toe down, shoelaces facing my catcher. If my shoelaces face in a direction other than my catcher, then I'm gonna have more foot on the ground. You can see where Jenny's feet, she's got her whole foot down there. Her whole foot is collapsed. It almost looks, you look at that and you go, how are you, it looks like she's breaking her ankle. A lot of girls do that. A lot of girls do that. And a lot of girls start doing that from the beginning of their push off and I'll get into that in just a second. You see in my picture, I'm actually have my toe down, I'm, I'm airborne in that picture. There was a big hole there, that's why. So that's why. Yeah. But you see how my toe is down and I'm making sure that I drag just my tiptoe as much as I can, because I want the least amount of foot on me down on the ground as possible. More foot is more of an anchor. Less foot means you're going to be able to glide and get more distance towards the catcher. The finish. Now we're at the finish. 
pictures, you see this, girls doing this, girls being taught to do that. Where's Michelle Smith's arm? Mid-motion, you see her, her arm is snapped. Jenny Finch's, her arm, you can see it, it's starting across her body. You watch Jenny Finch, if you go home and you do a YouTube video of Jenny Finch. We looked today for as many pictures as we could of Jenny Finch releasing the ball. Not one dad on earth took a picture of that face of Jenny Finch when she's taking, they all got the glamour pictures where Jenny's looking at the camera like this and there's very few. But if you look at the, the actual video of watching Jenny Finch throw, she does this. She snaps her elbow and then brings it back in some kind of almost like a jerk motion. She goes back like this. But the release happens as she whips it. Michelle Smith does the exact same thing. Her arm snaps. Everybody snaps their arm across their body when you're throwing the ball overhand or underhand when you're trying to get the most power from it. It's how we're designed to move. I mean, again, I, I can cite more sports where you think of how, our, how we get power. Field goal kickers no longer run up and kick straight on, they go at an angle. And they come running up and boom, watch how their foot goes when they kick. So, I want them to have a relaxed, loose elbow. I don't want them to have a stiff, bent elbow. Big difference in the two. Huge difference in the two. <coughs> drills. I have a pitcher do three drills, and only three drills. And they're all designed to be the way she's going to pitch when she makes her pitches. I'm not a believer in knee drills and wrist flip drills and all kinds of things that isolate and break down the motion so much that it makes it harder for the pitcher then to put it all together. I want her to work on her timing and her snap from the start to the finish of her pitching motion. So in her warm-ups, I have her do three things. First one, start off sideways, arms and legs move together, up together, down together, just like that. Nothing complicated about that at all. Main thing to think about is it's not for speed. So you gotta make sure that you tell girls, and girls especially, young girls, they have two speeds, on and off. They don't understand slow motion. You try to tell a girl to go slow motion and she goes 200 miles an hour instead of 800 miles an hour. Slow motion, and because they wanna try to throw the ball 100 miles an hour, they go way up and then down and they snap it as hard as they possibly can. I don't want the glove hand to go above my shoulder. When I pitch in a game, my glove hand does not go up above my shoulder. So I don't want to warm up doing that. I want them to look like a letter K. Up together, down together, just like that. And as she's doing it, she's not only working on the rhythm of her arms and legs moving together, she's working on her shoulder staying pointed to her target, her elbow snapping as she comes through her, her release point, her stomach, and she can also be working on the toe drag. Bringing the foot straight up, toe down, laces point to the target, knees come together. <clears throat> if you're catching for your pitcher and you notice that her knees are not coming together, you have a pitcher that's pitching around her body. She's falling off her line. If she simply drags her foot straight forward, she's staying much straighter and aligned to the catcher, odds are she's gonna throw a straighter pitch. If her body's going offline, She's, gonna, she's doomed. She's going to be falling all over. She's got her body going multiple directions. She's going to have to make corrections in order to get the ball to go straight again. A lot more things going wrong. And again, all of these things are related. Every part of the pitching motion is related, and it comes full circle when it comes time to throw the pitches. When it comes time to throw the pitches. And I hope everybody sticks around for that because I'm going to talk about all the pitches in the next session. So, after this one. Up together, down together. Next one, sideways, I have a start, circle motion. Just like that. Not for speed, but just a sideways circle. This one really exposes where she has the biggest problem. If she goes around her body, if she jerks her shoulder, this one's gonna really expose it because now she's going full circle, but she doesn't have the extra half of the motion in order to correct herself. So. If she's going around her hip, you're gonna really see it on this one. So you gotta get her to slow down, touch her arm to her stomach. Arm to the stomach, okay? Again, she can work on the footwork while she's doing this. She can work on the elbow snap while she's doing this. She can work on the arm touching the ear as she's doing this. 
All of these things can be worked on simultaneously. So after she does this, and then she does this. Now, let me back up and say on the first one, please notice that I didn't do this. Okay? Because they'll do that if you're not careful. You gotta understand, it's about rhythm. Arms and legs moving together. It's like when you throw a ball overhand, arms and legs move together. Underhand, arms and legs gotta move together. Okay? Timing and rhythm gets taught from the beginning of their warm up. So, up together, down together, circle. Now, if you have a pitcher who does this and you want her to start getting away from that, this is where she starts to do it. She brings her hands to her stomach. Tell her she's rocking a baby. Rocking a baby. You're not shaking the crap out of them. You're just kind of rocking them nice and easy. Hands in your glove and you push your glove right to your target. Push. If she pushes her glove to her target, her arm is not gonna drop out of her glove. Above all else, what you're looking for is to make sure that the ball doesn't drop below her waist. The minute the ball drops below her waist, she's gonna lock her elbow. So, assuming that you get her to not separate her hands and throw the baby behind her like this, the first thing she's gonna do is this. She's gonna go and drop her hand down there. She didn't push the glove to the target. She's dropped her hand down. And she does that because muscle memory has trained her to do that. So she's got to go slow in order to not do that. Rock, push, through, okay? The third and final one that I have them do, and I'm sure everybody's seen it or has their pitchers do it already, is the walk through pitch. A couple steps back and you walk into it. The whole idea in doing that is to get them to cheat. I want them to get the understanding that the power is in the legs, so the harder she pushes off, the harder she's gonna throw. Same as a baseball pitcher, or an outfielder even, who tries to get a running start when they're throwing somebody out at home, their power comes from their legs. The more she's gonna get the power going from her legs, the harder she's gonna throw the ball. So you hope that that muscle memory starts to sink itself into her brain, that when she has to pitch full motion, she's gonna try to explode as hard as she possibly can. That's the goal. Those are the only three things that I have them do in the warm-ups. Now obviously if there's mechanical problems, we might have to break something down a little bit more on some things, but with a pitcher that I work with on a day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week basis, that's it. That's what I do. Three exercises on. Yes. Have you heard about the great softball coaches clinic that Fast Pitch TV is hosting? They have a great lineup of speakers, including softball pitching great Kat Osterman. See all the speakers at www.fastpitch.tv slash clinic. I'm sure this clinic's going to sell out quick, so get your ticket today. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed part three of Bill's clinic. Come back and watch next week for the fourth and final part of his pitching clinic. Now, if you have an iPhone, an iPad, or an Android phone, you need to get the Fast Pitch TV Show app today. Just go to your phone's app store, search softball or fast pitch, and you'll find it. Don't forget to check out our new skills video channel at coacheslook.com. It's a great way for high school players to get noticed by college coaches. Well, that's all for today, so until next week, thanks for watching. TV Network.